Right, what I'd like to discuss in this video is how to calculate reaction equilibrium, and I'm going to do that by doing an example. Uh, it might be a useful example for you, seeing this is related to design. Let's consider making methanol in the gas phase from CO and hydrogen, and that is the reaction mass balance to describe how to make the methanol. Notice I put the G in subscripts there to show that we are working in gas phase. How do we calculate K? Well, the first thing we have to calculate is the enthalpy of reaction. Now, the enthalpy of reaction is the enthalpy of formation of methanol in the gas phase minus the enthalpy of formation of CO minus two times, notice we follow the stoichiometry, there's two here, so minus two times the enthalpy of formation of hydrogen. The naught indicates we're using standard conditions, which is pure components at 25 degrees C and one atmosphere. Now, what this value is, is also the heat released if one mole of CO reacts to completion to form one mole of methanol, and this reaction happens at 25 degrees C and one atmosphere. Notice we're trying to work out reaction equilibrium constants. In other words, we presumably think the reaction doesn't go to equilibrium. But this value here is the heat released if the reaction goes to completion. Right. Let's take that out the way and carry on with the calculation. We need to look in tables to find values. And if we look in the tables, we see that with the enthalpy of formation of hydrogen is zero, because that's its standard state. Enthalpy of formation of CO is minus 110 kilojoules per mole. And there's the enthalpy of formation of methanol in the gas phase. Be very careful. The values you use here must correspond to the phases in the equation you're looking at. So in the gas phase, the enthalpy of formation for methanol is about minus 201 kilojoules per mole. We can then substitute that in. And substituting, we get that um, we have the enthalpy of formation of methanol, minus 201, minus the enthalpy of formation of CO, so that's minus, minus 110, minus 2 times 0. And so we get that the enthalpy of reaction at 25 degrees C is minus around about 91 kilojoules per mole. Right, the next thing we need to calculate is delta G naught of reaction which is G of formation of the methanol minus, and remember it's in the gas phase, minus G of formation of the CO minus two times G of formation of the hydrogen. Now, this again is the change in G if one mole of CO reacted to completion to produce one mole of methanol in the gas phase. And this reaction happened at 25 degrees C and one atmosphere. And please note the basis in thermodynamics is always one atmosphere, not one bar, one atmosphere. Right, let's take that out and carry on with the calculation. If we go and look in our data tables and find values, we see that what we have here is geoformation of the methanol gas is minus 162 kilojoules per mole, geoformation of hydrogen is zero, and geoformation of CO is minus 137,16 kilojoules per mole. If we substitute that in, we get that delta G is minus uh, is the G of the methanol minus the G of the CO, which is a minus, minus 2 times naught. So that gives us about minus 25 kilojoules per mole. Right. Next thing we have to do is look at calculating the equilibrium constant at 25 degrees C. Now, the relationship between the equilibrium constant and delta G is that equilibrium constant at some temperature T naught, which is 25 degrees C, is exponent of the delta G at that temperature divided by the universal gas constant R times T naught. If we then substitute our values in, what we see is that then is equal to exponent, and there's our delta G, minus 25,27, but that is in kilojoules per mole, and the universal gas constant is 8,3, but in joules per mole per K. So we have to correct that 
and we do that by converting to joules and there's a thousand joules per kilojoule and we multiply by temperature but temperature has to be in Kelvin so it's 273 plus 25 Kelvin and this gives us an equilibrium constant at 298 Kelvin of 28 uh, 26,000 and notice there's no units because it is an equilibrium constant right now we've calculated the equilibrium constant K at 25 degrees C, how do we calculate it at some other temperature, T? Well, what we first need to know is how the enthalpy of reaction changes with temperature. So here we have the relationship between the enthalpy of reaction at some temperature, T, and the enthalpy reaction at, at 25 degrees C. And it's the difference between them is um, caused by the difference between the CP of the products uh, and that is where you multiply them according to the stoichiometry in the reaction, minus Cp of the reactants. Now usually, and particularly for initial estimates, that term is pretty small. And if that's the case, then what you can do is say that basically enthalpy of reaction is roughly a constant, or because that's small here, basically the enthalpy of reaction at some other temperature is approximately that what it was at 25 degrees C. As I say, for first estimates, that's not a bad approach. If that's the case, then, uh, and this is all assuming you go back to your thermodynamics, there's a relationship between the equilibrium constant at some temperature T and the equilibrium constant at T naught, in other words, it's standard conditions 25 degrees C, and they're related by multiplying the equilibrium constant at 25 degrees C with exponent minus delta H of reaction over R 1 over t minus 1 over t naught. So in our case, let's say we're wanting to work out the equilibrium constant at, say, 350 degrees C. And remember, these ones, we always have to go to Kelvin, so that's equivalent to 623 Kelvin. If we put all the numbers in and have a look what that gives us, what we get, oops, there we are, is K at 350 degrees C, or 623 Kelvin, is the K that we had at 25 degrees C, which we worked out as 26880, times the exponent of the delta H of reaction, which was about nine, minus 91 kilojoules per mole, and remember it's a minus, times a minus. Uh, R is, again, 8.3, but that's in joules per mole, and this is in kilojoules, so we have to change from kilojoules to joules, which we do by multiplying by 1,000. And it's one of the temperature we're interested in, which is 623 Kelvin minus 1 over 298 Kelvin, which gives us an equilibrium constant of 0, 0,000134. Right, so just to check where we're at, it seems like we did an awful lot of calculations. We take our reaction and we calculate the delta H of reaction. We've got to find the values in standard thermodynamic tables of the components in the reaction. We've got to look for the right phases and we've got to correct for the stoichiometry. Similarly, we look in tables and we find the delta G naught of reaction at standard conditions, 25 degrees C or 298. Knowing delta G naught, we can calculate the equilibrium constant at 298 Kelvin uh, by the simple relationship that we looked at earlier. If we want to find out how the equilibrium constant changes with temperature, we then have to use the delta H we've calculated together with a K naught using the formula on the previous slide and that allows us to calculate the equilibrium constant at any other temperature.